Welcome back to 15 Min History. Today we're going to take a look in the crazy world of Napoleon Bonaparte, a man whose name is synonymous with power, ambition and conquest. In his book Napoleon the Great, Andrew Roberts takes us on an enthralling journey through the life and legacy of one of history's most fascinating figures. From his rise to prominence as a military genius, to his controversial reign as Emperor of France, this book offers a captivating insight into the man behind the legend. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready to explore the incredible story of Napoleon the Great. Napoleon the Great by Andrew Roberts provides an in-depth look at Napoleon's early life, beginning with his birth on the island of Corsica in 1769. The book describes how Corsica was a French possession, but that many Corsicans resented French rule and were fiercely independent. Napoleon's father, Carlo Buonaparte, was a lawyer and politician who initially supported the French authorities on Corsica. However, he later became a vocal opponent of French rule and was forced to flee the island with his family when Napoleon was still a child. The book goes on to describe Napoleon's education, which began at a military school in Brienne. Despite being an outsider, both because of his Corsican background and his relatively low social status, Napoleon quickly excelled at his studies, particularly in mathematics and geography. However, he was also known for his fiery temper and was often involved in fights with other students. After completing his education at Brienne, Napoleon was admitted to the École Militaire in Paris, where he continued to excel academically. He graduated at the age of 16 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the French army. The book describes Napoleon's early military career, which began with his service in the French artillery during the Siege of Toulon in 1793. Despite being a relatively junior officer, Napoleon's strategic and tactical abilities quickly caught the attention of his superiors and he was soon given command of his own artillery battalion. The book also explores Napoleon's personal life, including his relationship with his first wife, Josephine de Beauharnais. Although the couple were deeply in love, their marriage was not without its difficulties. Josephine was known for her extravagance and infidelity, and Napoleon was often away on military campaigns. Napoleon's Italian campaign, which lasted from 1796 to 1797, was a turning point in his military career and established him as a brilliant commander. The campaign began with a surprise attack on the Austrian forces in Italy, which were spread out and poorly organised. Napoleon's initial victories allowed him to establish a base in northern Italy, and he then marched south to engage the Austrians on multiple fronts. Napoleon's tactics during the Italian campaign were innovative and effective. He made use of artillery and cavalry and he employed tactics such as dividing his forces and attacking the enemy's flanks. He also made effective use of propaganda, issuing proclamations in Italian to win over the local population and encourage desertion among the Austrian troops. One of the most significant battles of the Italian campaign was the Battle of Arcole which took place in November 1796. In this battle, Napoleon's forces were initially repulsed by the Austrians, but he personally led a counter-attack and successfully captured the bridge at Arcole. The battle was a gruelling and costly affair, but it demonstrated Napoleon's bravery and tactical skill. The Italian campaign was marked by a series of battles and engagements, with both sides suffering heavy losses. However, Napoleon's forces ultimately prevailed and the Austrians were forced to sign the Treaty of Campo Formio in October 1797. This treaty gave France control of northern Italy and recognised the French puppet state, the Cisalpine Republic. The Italian campaign was a significant victory for Napoleon and solidified his reputation as a brilliant military commander. It also had lasting effects on Europe, as it marked the beginning of the end of the Ancien Regime and the rise of nationalism. 
The campaign demonstrated the power of modern warfare and the importance of logistics, intelligence and leadership in military operations. The book focuses on Napoleon's rise to power and his early years as First Consul of France. The book describes how, following his successes in Italy and Egypt, Napoleon returned to France as a celebrated military hero and was soon appointed First Consul in a coup in 1799. The book provides a detailed look at Napoleon's domestic policies during this time, including his creation of a new constitution and his efforts to modernise French society. Napoleon was known for his authoritarian leadership style and he quickly consolidated power, centralising control in the hands of the executive branch and suppressing dissenting voices in the press and in government. One of Napoleon's most significant achievements during this time was his creation of the Napoleonic Code, which became the basis for many modern legal systems. The Code was designed to establish equality before the law, protect private property rights and promote religious tolerance, among other things. The book also explores Napoleon's foreign policy during this time, including his efforts to expand French territory through military conquest. One of his most significant military campaigns was the Battle of Marengo, which saw Napoleon's forces defeat the Austrian army and secure control of northern Italy. In addition to his military conquests, Napoleon also made significant diplomatic strides during this time. He negotiated a peace treaty with Britain in 1802, which ended the hostilities between the two countries that had been ongoing for over a decade. However, the peace was short-lived and tensions soon resurfaced. As the book continues, it focuses on Napoleon's years as Emperor of France, from 1804 until his abdication in 1814. The book describes how, following his coronation as Emperor, Napoleon embarked on a series of ambitious military campaigns and diplomatic initiatives which would eventually lead to his downfall. The book begins by exploring Napoleon's efforts to establish his legitimacy as emperor and his attempts to consolidate power in his own hands. He implemented a range of reforms designed to modernise French society, including the creation of new administrative departments and the establishment of a national education system. At the same time, Napoleon continued to pursue his military ambitions launching a series of successful campaigns against various European powers. He defeated the Prussians at the Battle of jena Auerstedt in 1806 and went on to defeat the Russians and Austrians at the Battle of Friedland in 1807. These victories helped to expand the French Empire and cement Napoleon's reputation as one of the greatest military leaders of all time. However, the book also explores the challenges and setbacks that Napoleon faced during this time. He was unable to defeat the British Navy and his continental system, which was designed to weaken Britain's economy by restricting trade, ultimately proved unsuccessful. The book also describes how Napoleon's military campaigns, particularly his invasion of Russia in 1812, took a heavy toll on his army and resulted in significant losses and setbacks. In addition to his military struggles, Napoleon also faced challenges on the diplomatic front. He struggled to maintain alliances with other European powers and his annexation of various territories and his heavy-handed approach to diplomacy ultimately led to the formation of a coalition against him. The book also explores Napoleon's personal life during this time, including his relationships with his second wife, Marie Louise, and his mistresses. It describes how Napoleon became increasingly isolated and paranoid as his reign progressed, and how his hubris and overconfidence ultimately contributed to his downfall. The Continental System was a policy implemented by Napoleon in 1806, with the aim of creating a European-wide economic system that excluded British goods. The policy was in response to Britain's control of the seas and its ability to disrupt French trade. The continental system aimed to weaken Britain's economy by cutting off its access to European markets and forcing it to negotiate a peace treaty. Under the continental system, France and its allies agreed to boycott British goods and to prevent British ships from entering European ports. Napoleon hoped 
that the policy would force Britain to come to the negotiating table and accept a peace treaty. However, the continental system proved to be difficult to enforce, as many European countries relied on British trade for their economies. Smuggling of British goods into Europe also became common, and the policy led to tensions between France and its allies. Some countries, such as Portugal and Russia, refused to comply with the policy, leading to conflicts with France. The continental system ultimately had a negative impact on the European economy as it disrupted trade and led to inflation. The policy also had unintended consequences as it sparked the Peninsular War in Spain and Portugal and led to tensions with Russia, which ultimately resulted in the disastrous Russian campaign of 1812. The Russian campaign, which took place in 1812, was one of the most disastrous campaigns of Napoleon's career. The campaign was launched in response to tensions between France and Russia, which had grown as a result of disagreements over the continental system and the French occupation of Prussia. Napoleon assembled a massive army, consisting of over 600,000 troops, to invade Russia. However, the campaign was plagued by logistical problems, as the massive army struggled to maintain supply lines and suffered from disease and desertion. The Russian army employed a scorched earth policy, destroying crops and villages to deprive the French army of resources. The first major engagement of the campaign was the Battle of Borodino, which took place in September 1812. The battle was a brutal affair, with both sides suffering heavy losses. Although the French emerged victorious, they were unable to pursue the retreating Russian army and were forced to winter in Moscow. The decision to winter in Moscow proved to be disastrous, as the city had been abandoned and offered little shelter or supplies for the French army. The Russian winter was particularly harsh that year, and the French army suffered from frostbite and starvation. Napoleon was forced to retreat from Moscow in October 1812, with the Russian army in pursuit. The retreat was marked by brutal fighting and harsh weather, with many soldiers dying from exhaustion, disease and exposure. The campaign ended in disaster for the French, with only a fraction of the massive army returning to France. The Russian campaign was a significant turning point in Napoleon's career, and marked the beginning of his decline. The Russian campaign had significant consequences for Europe, as it weakened France's military and political power and emboldened other European countries to challenge Napoleon's rule. The campaign also had a profound impact on Russia, as it boosted national pride and encouraged a sense of unity among the Russian people. Napoleon's exile and his final years on the island of St Helena. The book describes how, following his defeat at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, Napoleon was exiled to the island by the British, where he would spend the remaining six years of his life. The book begins by exploring Napoleon's initial reaction to his defeat and exile. It describes how he attempted to take his own life, but was prevented from doing so by his loyal followers. He then surrendered to the British and was transported to St Helena, where he was initially kept in a small house on the island. The book provides a detailed look at Napoleon's life on St Helena, including his daily routines and his relationships with those around him. It describes how he was initially treated with suspicion and hostility by the British authorities, but eventually gained a degree of respect and admiration from his jailers. During his time on St Helena, Napoleon dictated his memoirs to a group of loyal followers, providing a detailed account of his life and career. The book also explores Napoleon's relationship with his doctor, Barry O'Meara, who became a close confidant during his final years on the island. The book also delves into the controversy surrounding Napoleon's death, which has been the subject of much speculation and debate. While the official cause of death was listed as stomach cancer, some historians have suggested that Napoleon may have been poisoned by his British jailers. Thank you all for watching the video. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. We would also appreciate it if you could take a look at our other channels. I will link them down below.